Oh, Russell Shealy. His record chasing for Syracuse, he's been fantastic in his redshirt senior season. Looking to post. Sheely looking to post another win so far as eight victories on the season. On the other side, Parises will look for his first. Loyola starts out with the ball, moving from left to right. We're underway at SU Soccer Stadium between the Greyhounds and the Orange. Syracuse set into its formation as Loyola has the ball going forward. He spoke with coaches before this contest and thinking about how this match would play out to see if the physicality would really take its toll so far. Ball swelled on that far side, but Syracuse and Loyola probably some of the grittiest teams in college soccer. They commit some of the most fouls in their own conferences. Yeah, and not the, some of the most fouls, but the most fouls in both conferences. Syracuse leading the ACC with the most amount of fouls, and then Loyola win the Patriot League. So that's evident of Syracuse's press on that far side. The Orange win the ball back. Booster Schoberg mans the defense as he's done the entire season. The anchor point of the back three. Here's a Poku on the ball taking a touch. The Ghanaian rolls it back, and it's outside with Jonah Liebold. And something with that pass out to Liebold, labeled right there, excuse me, is with the 3-5-2 formation, Syracuse really tries to widen the field with those wing backs. Olu Oyagunle with the throw in. Apoku settles it down past three different players. Toe pokes out wide with Singleman. Noah Singleman into Levante Johnson at the top of the box. Intercepted by Loyola, they could look to break. It's early in this contest, more white shirts flood forward. The pass is initiated. Gianni is finally called back behind the line. Yet to wait for him to touch the ball before the flag goes up. And another thing with that 3-5-2 formation is with only three Syracuse defenders in the back, it's really reliant on the wing backs to make those quick transitions. You gotta be in really good shape to get back on defense. Schoberg chops the ball forward, flicked away by Thomas Gray and Levante Johnson. The Seattle transfer can't shrug his way past pressure. The ball's finally settled, then reversed the other way. And Curdy settles down for Syracuse. Schoberg with Kachevsky. One of two pivots in this midfield. You mentioned how the wing backs are so important, but also those holding midfielders as well. In order to do that formation, you have to have a lot of trust in the center midfielders as well as the keeper on the other side of the field. Freed up by Baselli, now out wide with Labeled. He's one on one on his favorite left. Cross looped inside on the far post. And Levante Johnson has the first. Levante Johnson was in the right place at the right time, waiting for that keeper to for it to stumble out of his hands. And he was right there for that rebound. Less than three minutes into this contest, Johnson on the back post. Labeled made a great cross there. It went straight to, to Parisis right there, but luckily Johnson was right there to get that save and to get that in, the goal. So Syracuse ahead one nothing. Johnson off his right leg with desperation just trying to heave that ball in. He made that back post run and with the wing, other wing back on the right wing, he was there instead. So Levante Johnson, one of the leading point getters for Syracuse along with Nathan Apoku, catches up with his fourth goal of the season. Second on the team for that dynamic front two head coach Ian McIntyre has. This is actually his first goal since September. So like Keelan Swales on the opposite side of the field, it's been really hard for him to get another goal in that until today. Vaselli with a challenge in from behind. Loyola gets the restart here with a free kick just past midfield. Gray lofts it to the left side of the field. Kachevsky's racing forward. He's slid down near the end line. Strong play tracking back by Richie Nichols. Kuczewski, one of the most physical players in the midfield for Syracuse. He did have a red card against UVA not too long ago, but 
the physicality is really there for the Orange because of him. That matchup against Virginia was Syracuse's first loss of the season here at SU Soccer Stadium. Here's Baselli breaking between the lines to Sinclair, to the front post, it's a Poku for the second. Just like that, Syracuse up 2-0. There's another play, great play by Syracuse coming in from across over to the center forward. And Apoku was right there again, like the first goal. It came out wide for the open pass, but then he tried to get into the midfield and Apoku with that great tap in past the keeper. Nathan Apoku with his sixth goal of the season for Syracuse. Coming into this contest, third in the ACC and points with 14. Now tax on two, up to 16 points on his total. And, and it's just a difficult look for the Loyola netminder, Constantinos Parasis. He's had to deal with ACC competition, but didn't get scored on this early against NC State in Loyola's opener. There needs to be a response from the Greyhounds. Apoku's chances this year, he leads the team in shots. And he's also been great at setting up plays too. Sinclair gets a foul tracking behind. Sheely was out of his box there for a quick second, was able to boot the ball away. So more of a tactical foul for Manfredi Sinclair. For Sheely too, as a, as a grad student as, and as a keeper, it's been really great to have that experience there for the Orange. For both keepers as well, but Sheely getting the nod in this one as he has for most of this season. The redshirt senior out of Cartersville, Georgia, has organized his team. Two men in the wall. The free kicks flung into the far post. of Poku heads it away. Quick glance, and Syracuse needs some quick passing combinations. They're suffocated on the near side, and the ball's turned over to Kang. Baselli acts down. Syracuse gets the whistle to go the other way. A little bit of sloppy play there from Syracuse in trying to get the ball out of their defending half. And luckily a foul for them is what helped them get it. Curdy with the switch of the field. There's space open. Leibold couldn't get a first touch pass. Kachevsky was breaking behind the line. Turned over yet again. Sinclair to Poku. He's dropped into a false nine roll. Can't get past the midfield, but... Draws the ball away from Loyola, and now the Greyhounds look to break. Can't get past midfield. Head coach Steve Nichols' side will calm things down to the other side. Nichols clips it forward. And Kakayura stood up on the end line. It'll be the first corner kick of the contest going to Loyola. This will probably be one of the first chances for Russell Sheely in this matchup as a keeper, especially with the th only three defenders having those wing backs come back to defend everyone in the box. Keelan Swales stands over the ball on the near side corner flag. An outswinger from the Englishman headed away by Johnson. More work to do for the Orange as Rodriguez collects. Second cross blocked by Kachewski, the Orange are out. Advance with Levante Johnson. Gonna get a clean touch on it. Count Dengler races to the ball. Leibold in front of his pass and Richie Nichols collects for Loyola. Another foul against Syracuse. Good play for McAvoy to be in the position to receive that ball and shield it away from Singleman. And with those fouls already, there's been a couple for this, these two teams who have committed a lot of fouls in the past for Loyola. The two teams have been really physical. Labeled speeds past the lines. From out to in, can't barrel his way past another Greyhound. Nichols boots it free. And Labeled made that quick cut into the middle instead of going down the line on the wing, trying to find some open space, which there has been pretty, pretty much this whole game, space in the middle. And so the onus of this 3-5-2 formation on the wing backs 
Leopold getting up and down this left side flank resulted in the first goal for Syracuse. There's Kaczewski sp spreading the ball out and making sure to shift sides. He's been really great at checking his shoulder to see where the next best option to pass the ball is. Laced inside by Apoku, another beautiful ball from Kaczewski. Leopold up the end line, then chopped away. Last touch is ruled off of Jonah Leibold and it's out for a Loyola goal kick. Here's another example of Leibold really taking it to his defender and taking them on and couldn't quite get that cross in like he did last time for the first goal. Konstantinos Parasis with his left foot slices the ball up to midfield in his second start. He's conceded now two goals early on. Things have calmed down a little bit though for the Orange. Mistake from Dengler spills free for Apoku. Touches it down, cuts at the top of the box. Can't weave his way past pressure. Loyola can't get past the Syracuse press though. Sinclair, first time. Maselli with the strike gets blocked away. Now, Loyola hasn't been giving Syracuse too much time with the ball today. They've been great at really pressing them Ex just like there from against Kaczewski. Well, you gun lay first time. Baselli running the opposite way. Now it's lofted over the top. Gianni against Schoberg. One on one. Fires a shot. Sheely covers it up. Sheely making that quick turnaround with the quick dis the distribution of the ball to the out wide. Tricky pass for Leibold, he gets the nutmeg and he's going up into the box. Jonah Leibold, another cross to the opposite side. Singleman struck it true but blocked out in front. Baselli tries to get it but break dance free by Matthew Lala. And Lala specifically has been one of those defenders for Loyola that's been really coming in clutch for them too. Scoring two goals in the last two games. Singleman, Baselli, chest over the bar. Had a second try at it, couldn't keep it down. Yeah, he le leaned a little too back on that shot, not able to f have it dip enough under Parasis. Here he comes with the shot, really just leaning back a little too much. If he had leaned over it a little bit, maybe he could have taken a touch as well. And so Baselli getting a lot of those chances in the top of the box, a lot of the runs trailing late. How is Syracuse generating that space in front of the Loyola defense. I think with those wing backs too, they're making really quick transitions out of their defensive half in getting those plays up the field, labeled especially in those quick transitions. Syracuse using that to its advantage. Their two goals from Levante Johnson and Nathan Apoku make it the fastest two nothing start this season for Syracuse. Substitution for Loyola, number 16, Danilo and so a quick substitution early on, not even 15 minutes into the contest. And number 16 in white, Danilo Seglio is on to the pitch, and Pat Kakayura is off of it. Cross, lofted across that six yard box, nobody home on the end of it. And Leovold has tons of space. Making a play to Opoku, and he's been great at holding the ball, not necessarily trying to force it going forward, but instead he passed it back to Sinclair. And Sinclair curls it out wide. Jonah Leopold's had a lot of the ball on this left side. Back with Anthony Sinclair, now the vice captain with Noah Singleman. The engine of the SU midfield plays a pass forward to Singleman. Settles on his right, drives a shot! Whizzes past the far post. We were just saying how Labeled is getting a lot of action out on the left wing. Singleman hasn't been getting too much either until then. He had a great ball from the middle midfield, takes a touch for a great shot, but it couldn't go in. One thing for Syracuse today is really capitalizing on that outside space on the wings, and Singleman and Labeled have been doing so. Parasis with the goal kick. Eddie Rodriguez is manned 1v1. Can't find a passing outlet. Sinclair intercepts and Apoku turns to space. 
Sinclair through the middle. Plenty of time. So it's whipped out wide to lay bold. Sean McAvoy intercepts. Label turns around right near the corner flag. Keelan Swales is all the way back trying to get this ball and free it up for the Greyhounds. Syracuse engages at press and wins it back with its back line. And just before that one play out on the other side of the field too, they had a couple of passing, great passing sequences on the right side back into the middle to try and switch the field. And they've been great at doing that today and making sure to hit both sides. Christian Curdy with the ball. The Maris transfer played very well on the back line. Touted by his head coach as being reliable when called upon and out, an outstanding player. I mean, you look up and down the defensive roster, they're fantastic. Leibold is one of those guys as well. Whether you chalk it up as a midfielder or an outside back, you have to perform all those responsibilities. And I think his speed is what really differentiates him, and you need that as a winger. You need to be able to take on the players or play it back, and without speed, what can you do? Leibold tiptoeing the line, does touch it past out for a goal kick. Leibold is really applying that pressure to the, to the Loyola defense, as well as all the other Syracuse offenders. Again, like I said, not giving, Loyola's not giving Syracuse too much time, but Syracuse isn't doing the same. Paris is up the middle, and Sinclair is bodied from behind. Quick reset from Kajeski. That's an example of another set play where Kaczewski is really utilizing the quick, quick setup instead of just waiting to get everyone up the field because with three defenders in the back, you most likely already have everyone up the field. Oye Gumway steps up. Loyola emerges though with it. The ball's in behind. In for Danilo Seglio across the box. But not far enough for Sheely as he just gets straight to it. And that was a great setup play from Swales over there from the middle, making a quick effort to have it switch to the other side with a leading ball out the wing. Head coach Steve Nichols for Loyola in his ninth season said Danilo Seglio, probably one of the most crafty players he's seen on his roster in years, can create magic when the ball's at his feet. Just couldn't connect with a clean pass across the box. Matthew Lala with the throw, up the line. Gianni flicks on, Schoberg pushes it forward. We haven't seen too many Loyola chances to take it with the, with, at the, with the ball at their feet, excuse me, really showcasing their talent and footwork. So Schoberg still down. Does get back up to his feet. Kicked the ball out, said that he was chopped down by a Loyola player, but tackles going both ways, especially for a team that in the Patriot League and Loyola leads in fouls committed 188th of 203 total if you want to broaden it to NCAA. Annie, you mentioned it earlier. Syracuse, I mean, committed, conceded the most fouls in college soccer. So you expect to see a lot more of that as the game boils on. With the Greyhounds, though, something head coach Nichols said before this game was that one of their biggest issues could be giving up silly frustration fouls. Well, they get one to go their way for a chance for Danilo Seglio to stand over the ball and feed it in. For Seglio injured last season, the grad student has a chance to whip this ball in. Left-footed curler to the near post. It's poked free and it just skips wide. Matthew Lala was in behind the line. And Lala, like I mentioned earlier, this, this whole season has been really great in attacking that box. Here he is making that run against Russell Shealy and really trying to get a foot on it in the opposing box. He's really been aggressive in, in the attacking half. First really good chance for Loyola too. Lala, though, called offsides on that sequence. Syracuse looking to tag his back line, but 
Greyhounds win it back. And Seglio's out wide. And there is a stoppage in play as the Greyhound is injured behind it. And so for Steve Nichols, speaking about some players after being defending Patriot League champions, a great run that they had last season after getting the bid from winning their conference championship, play UNC in the first round. And the crazy thing to look at is that when they played UNC, a nil-nil draw in double overtime, lose 4-2 in penalties, but they outshot UNC. A big thing that he kept saying heading into this contest is that this is a Loyola team that can stand and be relentless against ACC competition. Yeah, and Nichols, too, has really and emphasized the amount of talent that each individual player on the Loyola team has. It's more of just been a struggle this year in having them come together as a unit. And those mental mistakes too, playing in their parts and losing chemistry as well, a huge factor. And so Greyhounds defense disjointed there. They concede a foul in transition. Look at the white jerseys in behind the line to set up for a Syracuse free kick. Nearly midway through this first half, Syracuse is up 2-0 off a third-minute goal from Levante Johnson and a fifth-minute goal from Nathan Apoku. The fastest 2-0 start to a game for Syracuse this season. Pachewski in, and Curdy's header just shrugged over the bar. And Loyola had everyone come back for that play, even set forward uh, Keelan Swales came all the way back too. Pachewski's free kick here was Pretty good positioning for Christian Curdy to get ahead on it, but a little awkward, too, in placement on his forehead. It's also tough when the ball is further towards the middle. You don't really have a great angle to heave it in, so puts more stress on the defenders to get a good header. And not enough time to make a run as well for a good header, too. Pass back safely to Sheely. The orange player's confident in his abilities. The ball's rallied up the line with Hapoku. Combining with Leibold, he's bodied by Kyle Dengler. It is a free kick called by our center official for the night, Luis Reyes. There's a quick set, up, set play for Syracuse again. Like I mentioned, they really try and capitalize on a speedy setup. Sean McAvoy with the ball for Loyola. Safe play up the line. Schilberg boots it back. Napoku's by himself on an island. Still pressing to win the ball back. It's toe poked out for another throw in. Something about this Syracuse team is its athleticism, but its physicality, like we've talked about a little bit. But its ability to press has really brought them this far. One thing Steve Nichols, the head coach for Loyola, complimented Ian McIntyre about coming into this contest is that you play in an ACC conference, one of the best conferences in college soccer, and their ability to play the game every way to try to win is what has allowed teams to capitalize. Here's Kaczewski, cut back cross, just goes away. And now joining us pitch side is Syracuse head coach Ian McIntyre, coach. Hey guys. Strong start for your side, it looks like, absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, terrific start. I um, think we've been excellent and uh, uh, just got to keep moving the ball and, um, and we're causing some problems. But uh, look, they, this is a talented uh, Loyola team. They've got very good players. Um, so the next goal will be an important one. Labeled has been making those really great runs down the left wing. How is the team going to look to try and get Singleman out on the other side too? Uh, look, I, th I think we've moved the ball very well on, on both sides. That they've, they've already made a, a tactical adjustment to move uh, the Sixers, the right back. And he's, uh, he's, you know, he's matched up against Jonah. Um, but no, look, we've we've had good moments, and uh, we, we realize that uh, we, you know we need this third goal though. Awesome! Thanks so much for the time. Thanks, guys. So some tactical switches maybe need to be made in response. Label getting locked up on this near side flank. What's more responsibility on Singleman and others? So that's up to head coach Ian McIntyre. In his 13th season with Syracuse, looking to spark 
more victories on top of what already has been a tremendous season. Syracuse entering 9-2-1 for the start of this one. Apoku and Johnson helping them to further it. There's Nathan Apoku racing in. Loyola Netminder spills it still on his feet. Konstantinos Paresis gets back to safety. Kachevsky though combines with Baselli. The threat's not over for the Greyhounds. Lorenzo Baselli, curler to the far post. It's palmed down by Paresis. And with that pressure from Apoku, it really forced Paresis to really have the ball jungled jumbled out of his hands, excuse me. And with this shot here, he finally got a clean catch. It's been a little messy for Paris this, this whole match so far. And the grass in front of his goal already torn apart, really. Paris is doing a lot of work here at SU Soccer Stadium. Syracuse up 2-0. Off goals from Nathan Apoku and Levante Johnson. Two leading goal scorers for the Orange. Loyola wants to reverse that though. It's Keelan Swales, one on one with Olu Olya Gunley. Swales in on his left, blocked by Schoberg. The diving play by Booster Schoberg, then McAvoy's shot sails way off the mark. Swales really trying to get another goal in there. In this, in talking to head coach Nichols before this, he mentioned how Swales really has been trying to overdo it a little bit in, in recent games. But today, he might just try and get a goal on net. And for the Loyola side that needs to have more help for players besides Swales, you look to those midfielders. One player that's starting is Richie Nichols contesting that header with Sinclair right now, the son of head coach Steve Nichols. So there's a bit of history in that family with Loyola. And Richie Nichols, one of the players that has been very physical for Loyola, Maryland, recording two yellow cards this season. Singleman plays it safe with Curdy. Now back with the captain, Noah Singleman. Pushes it ahead for Levante Johnson. Johnson scurries and keeps it on the line. It's one on one. Combines with Singleman, first touch pass, intercepted and touched away. The three defenders for Syracuse has been great today in keeping the calmness and composure of that field and making sure to see both sides and where there's space and where there's not. Lofted up the line by Albert Kang. Schobert goes all the way back. Curls across. Lucky to get to safety there, right across the net mouth. Long ball played for Labeled. Settled off a touch from McAvoy. And Baselli's up the line. Baselli with Jonah Label. Finally freeing up space again. Forces it in front. It's booted away. Sinclair at the top of the box. Looks for a pass. And Label. Gets into a bit of trouble there. Oya Gunlay, though, presses the ball back. A reach around foul call. Keelan Swales tracking back. So Syracuse gets a free kick from a wide position. And with that free kick, they're passing it back instead of trying to force it and go forward without the whole midfield up in the attacking half. And so Syracuse thinks that it can carve its way through the Loyola defense. With that, instead of taking those designated set pieces, they're just restarting play. Yeah, definitely. And instead of trying to force it, like I mentioned, they're really trying to switch it and make sure that they're hitting both sides of the field and find those through balls instead of an over-the-head over leading ball. Are you gun late to Sinclair? The vice captain that started every single game of his freshman season and when he's not injured, he's almost always in the lineup for 90 minutes. This year, dealt with a knock against number one Clemson, but he's been back in the lineup ever since. And this is a healthy team this year. This is a really strong fit, physical team in terms of fitness levels, and especially with that 3-5-2. Syracuse, when it wants to attack, can break with numbers, but like you said, three in the back. They can compact those midfielders and those wing backs as well. 
A little bit more free-flowing here, though. Pass nearly found Baselli creeping into the box. Sinclair toe pokes it over the head of Leibold. Trying to find Leibold there out wide as it's been happening this whole game pretty much. First substitutions of the game for Syracuse. Kirk Kalov in up top and Colin Byros into the game as well. Both of them coming off for Levante Johnson and Lorenzo Baselli. And for Colin Byros, one of the more crafty players on the ball, but also when he has contributed on the score sheet, it's been important. His two goals this season, one of them a game-winning goal against Penn State earlier on in the season that really set the precedent for Syracuse going forward. It'll be interesting to see if there's a change in dynamic of, of speed. Up the line, Loyola chopping it across. Headed safely down. Lee Gunway to Labeled. Great outside footed pass. And Apoku touches it down. More space for the Orange to break. Singleman in for Kalov. Settles it on his feet. Great sliding challenge from Dengler. Still work to do for the substitute. He earns a corner kick for Syracuse. And without Johnson and without Baselli in that opposing half, or in that attacking half, getting those through balls and getting those getting up into the box with that attack, attacking pressure. But instead, Byros is doing a really great job in getting in there and keeping that mentality and pressure high. Kurt Kalov taking this set piece. He has two assists on the season with 10 games played. His right foot of delivery into the near post. Settles down. Forces a tough save for Parasis. Was going slow, but could have trickled towards that far post. As that keeper, you still do need to have a quick reaction time to dis whether or not the ball's moving quickly or not, because he still has to get to the other side of the net and make sure that he's covering both sides. So Parasis, after a shaky start for himself, but also the Loyola defense, settling into the game. His first appearance of the season was a start and a 2-0 loss to NC State on August 26th. So his next start naturally is another Atlantic Coast Conference opponent in Syracuse. Two goals on the board from Levante Johnson and Nathan Apoku in the third and fifth minute. Apoku clips the ball forward. Kalov can't feather it down. And McAvoy resets all the way back and receives yet again. Sean McAvoy shouldered away, bumps it forward. Oya Gunway is putting a lot of pressure on Chiani. Now is double teamed, he's hurtled over the ball. Kucheski getting in there too for that double team, really applying, mac applying maximum pressure that they can. And Chiani stood over the ball for quite some time, the Loyola bench was talking to the referee and Steve Nichols talking to the fourth official now but the calling is he's just basically delaying game time standing over the ball. So Syracuse got that free kick to restart play. Labeled across to the top of the box. Skied up in the air. The two number eights battle for it. Kachevsky with a push to the back. And then Sinclair's in front of the ball. A little bit of of kind of unfair play a little bit. You see a yellow card coming up. Yeah, some antics early on. But for Sinclair, I mean, he was standing over the ball, but didn't want play to start quickly, so. It wasn't so much as applying pressure, but kind of in a cheap way. And not allowing them to even start the free kick. So Anthony Sinclair gets his fourth yellow card of the year. That long balls, too far of an intended target out for a goal kick. Not really a smart play for Sinclair to take. There are some tactical fouls that Syracuse has taken, but this, an out of conference opponent looking ahead to Louisville next week, ranked 11 in the country. Syracuse obviously has a job to answer here, but also prepare for the next ones as well. Yeah, like you said, not, not necessarily a, a needed move for him to take. 
and kind of just make it, giving them another chance to get the ball into, the, into Syracuse's defending half. Russell Shealy pushes his team forward. Bit of backspin on this one. Apoku chests it first time. Great play from Nathan Apoku. He strides in behind the line. Apoku on to his left. Into the top corner of the box. It takes three men to finally stop him. Nichols can't slide. And Singleman's cross is booted away. Apoku's footwork there was really incredible. He pretty much dodged three defenders, but just by keeping the ball in his own. But eventually no one was really in the box to get that cross. Schoberg one on one. Challenging Keelan Swales and he does foul Swales. This is a dangerous chance for Loyola. Yeah, another example of how physical this match is going to be between two players that really don't want to give up the ball. <laughs> Kirk Kalov and Colin Byro setting up the wall. You never know what Swales could do with his ability. Player with three goals on the season already. Plenty of players huddled along the far post, but this well within shooting range. Yeah, he has really two options. He could either, either make it on net or find a head. So Swales awaits the sound of the referee's whistle. Curls it to the far post. Shealy has it take a hop and Schoberg has to clean up. Finally, it's flicked free. Anthony Sinclair does the rest for Syracuse. Russell Shealy here, a little bit of an, a not clean save. Too close for comfort, really. Couldn't get a hand of it, but luckily Booster Schoberg was right there to clear it out. Another chance. Shealy has to punch it free up to the top of the box. It was Nichols with the strike. But a whistle's called for a push there. His players were challenging, and goal is negated. Two really close chances for the Greyhounds in, in not a lot of time. And so that's a free kick right in front of Russell Shealy's six yard box. Pushing aside forward again, Apoku had a lot of success on the direct ball. Goes right towards him again. Oyagunle steers it towards the near sideline. Sean McAvoy turns it and pushes it straight into label. Label really not giving his defender any time with the ball once he has it. Kang with the first touch pass, concedes possession. Kachevsky capitalizes. Apoku dazzles his way in. It's Giorgio Kachevsky. Oh, it's a save from Parasis. Kachevsky angry with his performance in that shot right there. He had a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper from a great ball through, but instead he shoots it right into the keeper, maybe expecting him to go over a little bit. Restart of play, Singleman on the far sideline, earns a throw in for Syracuse. Another substitute in. Camden Holbrook in for Jonah Liebold. This gives Syracuse a bit of different look. Two similar players, but fresher legs to maybe disrupt play on this near sideline. Especially on those wings, you're gonna need some fresh legs after all that running and those transitions from offense to defense. Singleman nestled on that right side. First touch cross over the head of Byros, then settled to feet by Kacheski. Another cross, flipped in, it's Kurt Kalov. The substitute gets his first goal of the season. Syracuse is up three to nil. That was really a perfect play with the cross coming from Kacheski. Oh, right across the box. Perfect to Kurt Kalov's head. He had the great chip over there. Kalov got up in the air in front of his defender to really get it in over the keeper. Kurt Kalov getting his first goal of the season. Fantastic freshman season where he racked up accolades being on the all ACC freshman team but hasn't really found his footing as a starter pushed in, been more of a supplemental super sub for head coach Ian McIntyre. 
has been able to profit off of that. And that's exactly what you want as a forward to do when, it, when you have a midfielder out on the wide making that cross. Callum got up there, was a big presence in the box. Another substitution, Apoku off the pitch, Julius Rausch on the pitch. Making his 10th appearance of the season. Another player that's been utilized for head coach Ian McIntyre out of the Borussia Dortmund Academy in Germany. And without the two first goal scorers for the Orange on the field, it should be an interesting chance to see the, the next goal chances. Cam Holbrook stops it up, pushes it back to Oya Gunley. This pass is lofted too far ahead of Colin Byros. Byro's not really sure whether to make that run or not because he has to stay on sides. Wasn't really prepared for it, I think. Paris is pushing his team forward. The netminder, a sophomore for, for Loyola, rather, getting his second start of the season. His first one against ACC competition at NC State. And in this one, he's been tested mightily. Backstopping the team early. Play kind of settled down, and that chance was finally converted on the end. A team like Syracuse was getting the chances, but then not necessarily completing that final pass. The Greyhounds are left to almost distribute the ball and make those long balls up the field because they're really not given, being given much time with the ball because of Syracuse's pressure. Number seven, Syracuse, relentless on the press. Pushing forward when they have the ball and when they don't. Right now, Cam Holbrook's pushed back on a throw in. Center official Luis Reese uh, shrugs his shoulders a bit. As far as the spot of the ball, and play resumes. Dengler touches it back to Gray. McAvoy up the line. Oyugunle pushes his man free, and Schoberg chases the ball back. Sheely too far ahead of Singleman. Good one-touch passing from Loyola. Byros breaks it the other way. The difference between Syracuse and Loyola's one-touch passing in the midfield is it's finding feet for Syracuse, but Loyola is almost trying to get it in the opposing half too much. Roush to Singleman, to Holbrook, and then stopped on the goal. Constantinos Parasis tested again, leaping out from his goal line. A big save for Parasis there with Syracuse getting in those crosses and into the, uh, in, almost at the 16 yard box with those headers. There he was able to get a hand on that one and, and save it from the offender. Parasis will take his time here as the clock dwindles down in the first half. Syracuse up 3-0 off goals from Levante Johnson, Nathan Apoku, and Kirk Kalla. Kane couldn't find Swales. Singleman, the first touch out to Rauch. Up the line unsuccessfully. Matthew Lala can't convert on a pass. He dives in. Plenty of space for Byros to capitalize on. Loyola could be caught in transition. It's Kachewski to Camden Holbrook. First touch cross. Byros intercepts. It's pushed out for a throw. It was a perfect example of Kachewski taking that ball, making a perfect opening touch on the left to have it switched out to the wing. And another cross for Syracuse. Whistle restarts play. Holbrook with the throw. Rouch settling to feet. Cam Holbrook, the first touch cross. Dengler blocks it up. Kaczewski to Rausch. Kalov at the top of the box. Back to Julius Rausch. He couldn't connect. Noah Singleman running on the far side. Another quick press from the orange. And Byros lays it out to Holbrook. Sean McAvoy slides it out. It was a clean slide tackle, almost necessary for the Greyhounds in that point in time.
few substitutions. One notable one for Loyola. Number 34 in white, Javar Stevenson. Six foot seven. And head coach Steve Nichols said he could really slot anywhere. He's listed as a midfielder, but has been played as a striker, been played as a center back right now. Gives them a bit more solidity in the last five minutes as that left center back. And with that height, you're re it's going to be great for the Greyhounds to have that extra presence for physicality in that midfield. His presence comes at a cost as only a freshman. Syracuse will attack his back line. Kurt Kalov toe pokes it free. Greyhounds take a sigh of relief though. Locke Sands on his own. Takes a spill to the turf. Gets up easily as Richie Nichols speeds on with Loyola. Kang tries to break through the press. The effort's still being forced by Syracuse. Up 3-0. They don't have the ball, it's players racing to it. Sinclair trying to intercept. He's helped out by Kaczewski. Long ball clip forward, it's behind Callum. The Greyhounds aren't utilizing those wings as much as Syracuse is, which I think is the biggest difference between these two teams tonight. For Syracuse, besides using those wing backs as we've seen, so they're utilizing space, but also they're not necessarily keeping the ball as much, it's just their pressure when they lose it. Yeah, Syracuse is not giving the Greyhounds any second with that ball, which is why we've seen so many times a long ball up the field. Syracuse marshalling players on that far side sideline. Booster Schoberg heads it free. It's reversed the other way for Holbrook to chase. Minutes remaining in the first half. Syracuse up three, no off two. Quick goals in the first half, and then a Kurt Kalov marker. That was his first of the season. Here's Kalov now battling with Kyle Dengler. Syracuse is a bit trapped on the sideline. They nearly break free. Kalov is stopped by Nichols. Then the ball is kicked forward. It's a pinball is out of play. A great instance for Loyola there, applying that pressure almost evenly as Syracuse would to them. Loxanne loses the ball. Holbrook waits patiently on the line to take a throw. The referee has had to give a few talking tos to players as far as holding their position on the line, so that's why Holbrook's taking his time on the throw. Gets the go ahead, it's over the head of Ralph. Schoberg to Byros. First time with Kaczewski, he has support. All the way out wide and then back with Christian Curdy. Sinclair shields away. Curdy does the rest. Oyagunle out with Holbrook. The Appalachian State man, a former teammate of Keelan Swales. Two players going to their respective teams after that program folded. So they get to see each other again, but Cam Holbrook sees his side up 3-0. And Loyola is kind of taking Syracuse tactic a little bit in applying really high pressure when they have the ball. Syracuse sitting in its own half a bit more. It's Ole Olegunye cooked. And McAvoy's shot is straight into the path of Sheely. Seemed like a great shot for Loyola there, a great chance rather, to get that one shot. He had a left foot, but just the placement wasn't there. It was almost easy for Russell Sheely. Oye Gunley was one on one. Good chance freed up by Loyola. Roush flicks it forward, touched away by Stevenson. Less than a minute remains in this first half. Syracuse pushing players forward. Loyola trying to do the same. Loxanne breaks past Sinclair, trips over a second attempt. Stevenson spars with Kalov. He's pushed into the end boards. 
and so it will be a free kick for Syracuse. Callup restarted quickly, but the ball went out. Center officials just talking to the Syracuse players, so nothing of it. The halftime whistle brings us to the end of this first frame. Syracuse leads 3-0. Kurt Kalov got his first goal of the season, Boston College. We talked about earlier in the beginning of the game that Louisville-Syracuse had a, a very interesting high-scoring game last year. And so just about ready to get underway, but Syracuse will be attacking a new netminder as Loyola has made a substitution. Thomas Zingreb is in in front of the Loyola goal. And for him, he has one game, rather, no games played on this season. It's a player that transferred in a few seasons ago. Stands at six foot five. He'll man the Loyola goal for the first time this season. So now a chance for head coach Steve Nichols to test different players and different responsibilities. For Zingreb, he hasn't really gotten a nod this season as a redshirt junior, but still has time to settle in, especially in a game where maybe some growing pains for Loyola after its Patriot League title last season. A big decision from head coach Steve Nichols to not play the two goalies that have been playing recently, Alex Bobachea and today's starter, Konstantinos Parasis. So it's a new look for Loyola, and they look energetic on the attack. Zhang combines, Swales on the left side. Flips across and Sheely claims it. Sheely making a good call there to come out of his net, call his defenders off of it, making sure we keep the communication high. Schoberg to Singleman. Jackson Glenn puts the ball forward into the vicinity of Zingreb. Singleman started the game as the right back, playing the center of the midfield now. Jackson Glenn kind of tucked out on that right side. And he's a guy that's been playing for Syracuse when called upon, six games played. Played a season high 60 minutes in that one nothing loss to Virginia. So now he's getting ample game time here out to start the second. Subbed in with about 10 minutes to go in the first. Yeah, got a little bit of experience and time on the field in the first half, taking it to be a little bit more comfortable this half. And Glenn, a Maryland guy as well. A lot of the players in Loyola recruited out of that state. The free kick is in. Shilly punches it away. Byros pushes it free, it passes opposite number. Swales, though, collects for Loyola. More subs on for Syracuse. Pagano strikes it forward, just ahead of Kalov. It's Francesco Pagano in the game for this second half. The Fayetteville Manlius High School product. Chesky trying to get it out there to those wings for that counter attack, following a really pretty good free kick from Loyola. So you look at some of the substitutes for Syracuse now. And head coach Ian McIntyre utilized the transfer portal for a lot of the great players he has on the team now, but Giorgio Kaczewski out of Liverpool and then Pagano from Manlius. A few local guys getting a shout as well. And Coach McIntyre using this 3-0 lead over an out-of-conference opponent to give Levante Johnson some rest and Nathan Apoku some rest in the second half. And both of them did their fair share of offensive work. Johnson with the goal in the third minute. Apoku followed him up in the fifth minute. Kalov tacked in another goal to get Syracuse up 3-0 over Loyola. Early on in the second half, though, it's the Greyhounds trying to attack. Gianni in behind the line. Good job with Schoberg in the back line, making sure that the entire back three are holding that line to keep those offenders on offsides. Shealy is pushing the players in towards the middle. 
on this free kick, way outside of his box. Syracuse had some success directly with Apoku. He's not on the pitch now, so especially in the first half, when you have a guy that can settle the ball to feet, it's so pivotal. And so what's the adjustment like for some of these new substitutes like Pagano that don't tower in frame like Nathan Apoku? It's a little bit hard, especially with a tall defense like Loyola has. And without Apoku's height and that physicality he has on the front line, they're gonna have to use some footwork and some speed that they, they can't use with the height. Syracuse also great breaking the press, how they manufactured a third goal for Kirk Kalov. So far though, the ball has swung back and forth in the first five minutes of play here in this second half. That ball trickles out for a Loyola throw. Not as much clean connecting passes in the Syracuse midfield as we saw in the first half. So what's the result of that? Could be from giving Loyola a lot more chances in the, in the attacking half for Syracuse. We saw the free kick, we saw some other chances, but it's a little bit more of back and forth in the midfield, which is hard for Syracuse to get in the other half too. And Loyola with a chance to reset into the locker room, it seemed, especially right out the gates. A bit more of a pressing response that they didn't have in the first half. Javar Stevenson forward, his pass nodded away by Curdy. Kang's forced out to his own sideline. Singleman intercepts, keeps it in bounds. Up front for Pagano, he takes a stumble, but frees it up for Kalov. That play was a good look at Syracuse not being able to connect plays this half. And it was a turnover from Singleman, and they're trying to force it a little bit more than they did last half, making those quick passes in the center. Glenn moving for Christian Curdy. It's up for Pagano. He's one on two trying to contest that header. So it's all the way back with Thomas Ingrep. Ball moves forward for Kalov. And Glenn steps on the ball. Does get to Christian Curdy straight into Jackson Glenn. That was a good look at Loyola applying that pressure to Syracuse, not giving Glenn that much time on the ball, not giving Curdy that much time to find a good pass. So he unintentionally got a handball. And Loyola tried to restart quickly. Daniel Chiani, again, he's in behind the line. So a positive if you're the Greyhounds, you're restarting play quickly. You're up in the ante a little bit, but that's now twice in the last minute, really, that Chiani has been behind the line. And, that's, and again, that's from Syracuse's defense, making sure you're communicating with the other two defenders in holding that line. Syracuse back with its three central defenders. Oyagunle to Schoberg, anchoring it out wide to Curdy. Jackson Glenn, great one-touch passing. It frees it up for Kalov. Couldn't touch a pass inside for Byros. The idea was definitely there in getting those quick passes into the midfield, the through ball up to the center forward, but it didn't connect. Keelan Swales all alone. Syracuse tracking back. It's up in the midfield, though, with Tony Saldana. Greyhounds taking more chances down by three. Lala. In the middle, shots taken, just past that right post. Sean McAvoy creeping in from his right back position. And with that shot, Sheely was anticipating it a little bit, but he read it very well, making sure it's gonna go wide. McAvoy with eight games played heading into this contest made his sixth start of the night. He's played all the minutes thus far for head coach Steve Nichols and he mentioned the prowess that Matthew Lala has as a left back. He's kind of an attacking back on that left side that scored the game winning goal for his team to begin the season against UC Irvine. Helped them to a strong start. I've kind of fallen back in conference play with some injuries. And so that's kind of the conundrum that Steve Nichols sees himself in now. 
how do you get your team to respond? Especially against Syracuse with the chance going forward. Clipped inside, Javar Stevenson dashes out with a great block. Loyola defense is really staying tight to the Syracuse offense, making sure they're not getting those crosses in that they did in the first half. He's off! And Aaron Cross over the bar, out for a goal kick. Cam Holbrook and Jackson Glenn now staying out there. Jonah Liebold and Noah Singleman starting the game on the left and right side, respectively. And McIntyre getting a chance to test different players in different situations. One thing Syracuse is lacking without Jonah labeled that he was really strong at in the first half is speed. And labeled is really great at not only applying pressure on the def defense, but taking on the defenders as well with a 1v1. Curdy knives it away. Kang tried to touch it free. It does fall to Richie Nichols, who spreads the width of the pitch with Sean McAvoy. Nichols drives it over the top. Curdy gets a glance on it. It's touched down. And then just ahead of the penalty spot, Schoberg sweeps it away. Curdy's interception there, getting a, a, not a great touch, but at least a touch on that ball was crucial in not letting Loyola have that perfect through pass. Zingreb sails it out wide. Daniel Chiani is ailing after a bit of a collision. He went for a challenge at the top of the box, and it's friendly fire. Friendly fire, but not a great look so far with some little bit of blood on his face. So Chiani will be tended to. Maybe forces another substitution for head coach Steve Nichols. Already brought some players in for Loyola, but has had some guys that are really stepping up in the absence. Despite starting this game, Kyle Dengler, a center back, has been playing for the injured Jordi Lucci's who had six starts at the beginning of the year and then played every game as a true freshman. Dengler dealt with injuries himself back on the pitch. And so we do see Gianni walking under his own power, a bit of a collision with his head. So those obviously taken seriously besides the ailment there. And that collision was tough for Keelan Swales, the other player that partook in that collision because both players were just trying to get, get up and get that ball and have a strong presence in Syracuse's half, but no, not really great communication between the two. And so it's a positive for Loyola with getting chances in the attacking third, pushing players forward, but what's the opportunity cost? What happens when you're taking those chances as the game dwindles along? They're definitely applying a lot more pressure than the first half and a lot more aggression than they that they needed too. So Albert King will switch to the center of the pitch and Locke San will enter as a left-sided player. Gianni is off the pitch, so changes being made. Locke San featured for a few minutes in the first half, back on in the second. Has one goal to his name. It was a game winner on August 29th at Delaware. Since then, this is 12th appearance of the night, but hasn't been able to find the score sheet since the start of the year. Byros tied up with Stevenson. It's a foul against Byros, chasing that ball in behind. We've seen a lot of battles in those runs in Loyola's half of Syracuse trying to get those through balls and those long balls over, but it just comes down to a foot race. And this one could be a foot race here. In past Sheely, and that's a penalty. Loxan into the game, and Sheely, one-on-one, -on -one, couldn't get to the ball first. It was a leading pass from the Loyola midfield to Loxan, and he had almost a chance with the 1v1 for Russell Sheely, but a clip from Russell Sheely and getting that foul right in the box. 
And so the tallies men for Loyola, Keelan Swales, stand over this ball to take the penalty. And our center official, Luis Race, will take his time to spot everyone up, make sure that everything is set in order. Russell Sheely does get a yellow card for the challenge. Syracuse has given up a goal on one penalty already this season. So that's one of their five goals that they've conceded at all through the entire year. It's tough for Sheely to make that call on a 1v1 whether to really go full out for it or and risk the fact that you lose a, a foul. Players encroaching the bounds of the penalty box. Whistle is set for Keelan Swales. To the spot, Swales converts. Loyola on the board with time to go. Swales with that PK placement went into the left side of the net with amazing pace. He had Sheely going to the left side of the net, but then he, from from Sheely's perspective, excuse me, and Swales really just bulleted that into the middle of the net on the left side. So if you're Swales, you're just picking one side or the other and driving it in, it just so happens that Russell Sheely went the wrong way. And with that speed is crucial with a strong keeper and with good reaction time like Sheely has. So Russell Sheely came into this contest with seven clean sheets, only five goals against. And so with that, the math chalks up to being a fantastic goals against average. The program record is 0 0.55 by Alex Bono in 2015. That team, the squad that produced the most successful season in school history that became the first number 10 seed to win the ACC tournament and earned a berth in the national one, went to the semifinals. A fantastic run from that side. So, Shuley, you could see him grimacing after the fact that you want to keep the clean sheet, but it's tough when it's not a goal and open play like a penalty. And it's really tough as a keeper, especially when you shoot out the, the number four team in the nation just last Friday. <laughs> Loyola's feeling it, it's up for Keelan Swales. Oh, you can lays 1v1. Great play by the left center back to back heel that forward. Now Syracuse brings out the big guns, Johnson and Apoku back up top. They had a little bit of rest in the beginning of this half. But one goal on, on the scoreboard for the Greyhounds. So an interesting look at this now, with Levante Johnson operating on this right side, what is going to change about his game as he kind of creeps forward but also plays back? It appears he's playing as more of a right back than a central striker. He's almost taking in the position as the winger, like he hasn't been before, he's been the forward. And with his speed and his aggression, it's gonna be great to go down that line and take defenders on. That Syracuse really needs. So Syracuse women's soccer in action. Their next game is Friday at seven o'clock with a full broadcast of that. And Syracuse recently came off a draw where it was against the number two team in the country, Virginia. So that women's team has been playing very well under head coach Nikki Adams. They've also had two close one no victories to top five teams in the country. So that's totally a fantastic watch. Tune in just before seven o'clock for pregame action on ACC Network Extra. Slid up by Baselli. And there's the women's team in attendance. Captain Jenna Tidman among others. Kendall Lauer, Grace Gillard in action as well. Some of those players that have really been performing very well for that team and they'll look to do some damage against Clemson on Friday. Cut back, Sinclair reads it. And Kachevsky breaks out. 
Kaczewski has been really strong in that midfield in applying that pressure to get that ball back for Syracuse. And Sinclair took a challenge to his right leg. It'll take some time. And so he's has the ball tracked back by Eddie Rodriguez. Sinclair also with a yellow card of his own right in this game. Rodriguez got a little bit too much leg in that play. If it had gotten ball, maybe it would have been different, but definitely a clear foul there. And so not too dangerous to warrant a booking. Rodriguez walks along. And Syracuse resets. There's Levante Johnson on the flanks. Apoku couldn't toe poke that forward. Johnson resorting to his typical ways of going to the midfield in the middle rather than taking it down the side. Labeled with the cross, sped to that end line. Kaczewski gets the last touch on that ball out for Loyola throw. Kaczewski looking for the call on that one. He thought there was a push from the back. Just a physical match tonight though. Schoberg skewers that ball. No progress, but it's knotted forward and settled by Baselli. Good shielding from Lorenzo Baselli. Now Jonah Liebold. One touch pass for Apoku. In behind, he slid down. And Apoku is still down behind the play. It is a clean challenge, and Loyola breaks. Apoku looking for that call that Loyola had not too long ago. He had a good run down the, into the box and just couldn't get that call. Baselli wants to appeal it, but it's after the fact. No VAR. Apoku takes a strike of the ball, and Javar Stevenson, the freshman, Cannot be overstated that that six foot seven frame can do so much in those sliding challenges. And that could have been an easy call for the refs to make that penalty kick shot because it did seem like there was plenty of leg room for that. But Stevenson clawing back, got it off his heels. So as you mentioned though, Annie, probably don't get that with any other defender on Loyola except for Stevenson to have that reach to be able to make the challenge like that. So things calm down a bit after a Syracuse penalty conceded. It was Keelan Swales in the 57th minute getting Loyola on the board for his fourth goal of the season. And his first goal since early September. Yes, yeah, Swales cooling off the goal scoring department. A lot of the scoring load bared upon him based on injuries to the squad. But he's always been able to rack up accolades being on the All Patriot first team in all of his seasons since joining Loyola as a transfer from Appalachian State. Something we haven't seen from Swales tonight is that playmaking ability. He has five assists so far this season and two were from their last matchup against Holy Cross. Here Swales, though, racing forward. Has the ball in behind Ole Gunle. First touch pass. Pushed away by Schoberg. Schoberg making an important touch there to get and intercept that ball, especially when you have such a fast player like Swales out on the wing going up against a Syracuse defender. The good thing about that challenge to the right of the corner flag for a throw-in instead of a corner kick. So Loyola has to maneuver something on that far side. Not super dangerous against Syracuse, and they're able to press and win the ball back. And those throw-ins closer to the corner flag are harder than further back because you don't have that much space in behind you. Swales on the ground. Schoberg clears yet again. Apoku races in on Stevenson. From behind, Nathan Apoku concedes a foul. Apoku really trying to get in that play there to get back the ball for Syracuse. It didn't quite work. 
Long ball clutched by Sheely. Distributes out to Christian Curdy. Singleman back with Curdy. Curdy and Singleman have a really great duo, passing duo that is here on this right side in keeping the ball, making sure not to force it, but waiting for players to make those runs. Curdy, a player that has started every single contest this season. And really ever since he's transferred here to Syracuse, the senior has really been thrusted into that role. Booster Schoberg obviously is a key player in the center, but Christian Curdy providing that balance in the back three. Another player that's been, has stood out recently for Syracuse in that center midfield is Anthony Sinclair. Head coach McIntyre said after yesterday, or excuse me, Friday's win over Wake, that it was the best performance he'd seen. From Grip personified from the SU midfield. Winning challenges high up the field. Johnson out with Singleman. The ball's just too far past the end line. Now tempers flare near the Loyola bench. Substitutes getting involved. A very clear push to Singleman from the back and after the play as well. Exemplifies the heatedness of this match today. There's the push from behind towards Singleman after the ball was almost out. The referees are still talking. Head coach Ian McIntyre behind the play was talking with Singleman, giving a bit of a hand signal. He said, don't retaliate or I'm going to sub you off, basically. With that, though, that is the reason why when there's offsetting bookings, Eddie Rodriguez and Noah Singleman getting cards. And so McIntyre needs his captain to step up. Both captains now in this contest in Sinclair and Singleman getting yellow cards. And for Singleman, it's his first yellow card of the year. So disciplined player and just gets roughed up behind the play and retaliates. It's what Loyola wants for a key player for Syracuse. And just before that, too, Levante Johnson had a really great step from a mistake of, from the keeper trying to kick the ball out. But Singleman getting into a little, I guess, altercation with Loyola here. And the interesting thing to look at is the push was not from Eddie Rodriguez. And so it looks as if that adjustment has been changed. Of course, he still was a part of the altercation. Lots of players got involved with that one. Well, to me, there's still more to discuss, but Rodriguez does keep his booking. So Syracuse and Loyola seeing tempers flare. It's interesting to think about when you look at the history of this matchup because these two sides haven't played since 2009 at a neutral site in Oneonta, New York. In that matchup on September 11th of 2009, Syracuse won in double overtime. And so overall, both sides splitting points at three and three, but Syracuse has never lost at home against Loyola, 2-0 oh, since 1985. So these teams don't match up often, but when they do, it has the makings of a really gritty matchup. Richie Nichols going forward. Oyagunle pushes him out towards the sideline. Blocks a cross out for a throw. The Oyagunle and and Nichols' matchup today has been really physical as well, but they're both playing each other super tightly. And it's getting hard for Nichols to get a cross in against him. And for Richie Nichols, playing as a central midfielder, what does that do for Loyola when he drifts out to the outside? It does open up space, but for Syracuse players in the midfield. Easier for Syracuse to defend, but at the same time, when you have a player on the wing, you can get those chances for a cross in. Loyola in behind. 
cut across by McAvoy. Shot tested on, and Shealy's up to the task. Shealy with that quick distribution of the of a pass out to the wide for Syracuse to get that quick transition as well. Jake Sweeney, the sophomore forward for Loyola, getting that shot. It's his seventh appearance of the year. Baselli keeps it low, just past Singleman. Out for a corner kick. Here's Loyola's chance against Russell Sheely. It, it did go straight to Sheely's hands. A shot from Jake Sweeney there. Good chance, though, for Loyola. That's been creating more chances, especially to start out the second half. Syracuse, though, put in its first team players after that 57th minute goal on the penalty from Swales. Baselli inside, ball on the goal line. It's touched away. Syracuse still trying to deal with it, but it's grabbed up by Zingreb. Syracuse having a tough time getting that ball in the net right there. It went through a number of players and no one could get a great touch on that. Luckily for the Loyola defense, you had that one clear trying to get it out, but ultimately landed in the keeper's hands. Sweeney couldn't get a good first touch. Sinclair boots it all the way back to Sheelan. Apoku leaps up and heads it out wide for Leibold. Just kept in on the line. A deflection. Baselli recollects. In for Leibold. Touches it onto his right. He fires a shot. Syracuse with its fourth. It's all but one for Syracuse with the response from Jonah Leibold. Leibold's shot there was really an impressive and amazing shot. With that pass over there, great overlooking pass, and 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 uh, he took that shot into the and cut it into his right side and made that quick touch one shot. So Leibold with two goals on the year, one of them game winners. This one, not necessarily a clinching goal, but a goal that provides security for Syracuse. Extending the cushion yet again to three goals. By making that quick cut to his right foot, he was able to get a clean shot rather than having to shoot it on his left foot, but also making the defender think he's going one way. And this is the last time, this is the first time rather, that Syracuse scored four goals in a contest since a 4-0 victory at Bucknell last season on October 11th. And good news for Syracuse. Next two matches, look ahead on the schedule. And on October 18th, you're home against that very same Bucknell side. The other way, though, it's Sweeney. His pass too far ahead, and Sheely collects. A good change of pace for Syracuse to have a high-scoring game especially after losing to an, an out-of-conference opponent just last week. Schoberg jumps in the air, head that ball away. Loyola got it back, and ball was pushed forward for Levante Johnson. Apoku, great hold up play, escapes pass one. It's in for Jonah Leibold at the top of the box. Zimbreb has to kick it away. Those were two really amazing touches from both Johnson on the first touch and then Apoku on the second one in forcing, boxing the defender out and then making a good quick turn to get the ball towards the box. So Syracuse with quick passing and verticality helped them to secure the lead they have now. First two goals came in rapid fire in the third and fifth minute from Levante Johnson and Nathan Apoku. Then Kurt Kalov scored to make it three to nil before Loyola got its lone goal from Keelan Swales on a penalty. Of course, the fourth one just minutes ago came from Jonah Leibold for his third of the season. McAvoy in behind. Advantage played, but then called back for Loyola. Free kick. Depending on who stands over this one, it's dangerous position. The in-swinger could test a shot. The out-swinger could look for a cross. I mean, Javar Stevenson's going into the box now. And the Greyhounds' only goal of the night came from a set play as a PK. So what can they do with this set play? 
Loyola comes into this matchup after a 2-1 to -one win over Holy Cross. Struggling to score goals this season, but have not been able to do much in open play. This another set piece to test their luck. Richie Nichols goes for a strike and it's over the netting, way over the bar. Sheely only used three Syracuse players in that wall there, hoping for some other opportunity to defend in, on man, v, man defensive. And so with that, maybe Syracuse expects a cross. I mean, Richie Nichols was in good position, but he got way under the shot. Yes, definitely needed to stay over it a little bit because it was truly skied over the crossbar. And so Keelan Swales was taken off the pitch momentarily. He's at midfield. Could provide a spark for his side yet again. Shilly boots it up through center. No one's challenging Apoku. He always has the ball at his feet. Races in. Alley oops it to himself, and he's still with the ball. Left footed pass through center, intercepted by Loyola. Coming off of those goal kicks and those puns from Shealy, Syracuse in the midfield has really gotten all those 50 50s. Game of leapfrog by Albert Kang. Nothing going of it, but Syracuse did get a free kick to restart play. They switch from far to near. Levante Johnson, first touch pass. Johnson just past the far post. That was an amazing set, or an amazing sequence of passes, excuse me, from Johnson there. Making that one two play in the box. He made that good run to get that ball back for a shot. It just wasn't quite there. A little bit of a rough angle for him. And again, it's labeled in behind with great speed and crafty ability in those interplay situations. Substitutions on both sides. The important one for Loyola. Keelan Swales back in, Jake Sweeney off. He's on for a few minutes and he was able to do a lot with his time. Now the sophomore is back on the bench and the veteran is up top. On that free kick as well, Syracuse did get the 50-50 ball again. They just couldn't hold on to it. I think Syracuse is having a tougher time this half keeping the ball in the midfield than they did in the first. Kalov pokes it free. Plays out with Boselli. Pass too far ahead of Lamonte Johnson. Attacks the goal box, over to the far post, and Apoku nods it over the bar. It was tough to get over that one. He was falling backwards, just couldn't steer it on frame. And for Levante Johnson, starting this game as a striker, and then moving out to the wing, and still being able to get those opportunities into the box for his teammates. Zingreb with the goal kick. It continues bouncing forward for Loyola. Locks in with a fancy pass. Can't merit from it. And then Nichols calling for it. Kirk Kalov made his play on a fancy try. Here's Loxan. One on one with Oya Gunlay. Then with Swales. Can't maneuver his way around the SU defense. Booster Schoberg, as always. Bounce. Swales had the opportunity there to find a simple pass instead of force it through, force a shot. Jabbar Stevenson, way out of his element, but forces it out for a throw, retreats back to his center back position. And Curdy will take the throw for Syracuse. Singleman, the only one checking into the ball on that throw in. Syracuse really does not allow much time for Loyola, Loyola to reset on those free kicks. Kachevsky sets it up really quickly to get it out to a wing player. 
That ball skywards and Grev catches it easily. Since the substitution at the half, Constantinos Paris has started the game, his second start of the year. Let in three goals and a handful of saves and Zingreb sees more chances materialize against him. Kaczewski with labeled, looking for the cross. It's deflected out for another SU corner. Matthew Lala, the defender for Loyola, is having a tough time keeping his players marked. So they're allowing, so it's allowing Syracuse to get those shots on and those crosses too. So you consider Lala as an attacking fullback. He gets caught out a lot of times and Syracuse has capitalized. He hasn't had too much opportunity today to attack Syracuse's box. So Swales on after a few minutes, Sweeney Back in, the sophomore did some damage up top. But his side has to defend a corner kick. Swung into the near post. Takes a flick on. It's in for Syracuse's fifth. Off a couple of bodies. It doesn't matter. Syracuse up 5-1 over Loyola. Another Syracuse goal that comes off of a header. A great corner kick with perfect placement to Apoku. Or two different players, Curdy as well. Yeah, it takes a few different bounces. Curdy was challenging with Kyle Dengler as well. Regardless, you have that height from those two attackers in that box on those corners, really getting up there for maximum pressure to get that goal, in, that ball in the net. And so Kurt Kalov serves the ball in. Took a few deflections off Loyola players, and so he's credited with his second goal tonight. Coming into this one with no goals on the year after a stellar freshman campaign where he had five goals. Now he has two on the board. Kalov even scored last year against Louisville, Syracuse's next opponent upcoming. We're giving that goal to three different players on Syracuse. Again, there was a corner kick from Kalov and a touch from Apoku and Curdy in the into the net. So now Syracuse in regular season play has equaled its total tally when they had a 5-0 victory over UConn. When they were at four goals, they had done that so last season, but had of course eclipsed that margin this year earlier on. It's been truly a great year for head coach Ian McIntyre. Lots of achievements, including the first time SU's beat two top five teams in one season. So Kurt Kalov getting credit for that goal. The last time he had two goals in a single game last season in his freshman year in a match against Binghamton. He scored twice in a seven nothing victory for Syracuse. That was also the game where Francesco Pagano had four goals. The only four goals he scored the entire year all coming in that contest. He's back out on the pitch yet again. Dengler turns past Pagano. Saldana pushes it all the way back to Zingrep. The Greyhounds keeping it in their half, just trying to hold on to the ball with lots of pressure from Syracuse. Oya Gumley with a pass straight into the path of Nichols, and it's stopped by Sheely. It was a mistake from Oya Gunlay, and luckily Sheely was there to protect it. Long ball. Press forward for Levante Johnson. He has runners in support of him. Pokes it free for Kalov. Kirk Kalov trying to spin his way past pressure. Here's Johnson. Levante Johnson with his back to goal. Scoops it out wide to Kalov. 
Kurt Kalov gets past his man. In front, his cross blocked. Kalov made that first initial run for Levante Johnson out to the wing where there was space. And then once he gets the ball, finally he takes it down the baseline, which is a really important tactic for anyone on the wing that has the ball to really apply pressure on that baseline, see if that he can pass it back or not. That's how Syracuse got a lot of its success in the first half when they're able to get out towards that sideline. Find those trailing runners, but Kalov got really close towards the goal, just couldn't find the pass. Here he is now with service, scored on the last corner. This one inside, but it is called back. Referee's whistle. Words play the other way for Loyola to reset. Another strong corner kick from Kalov, but some interesting, hard to tell what really happened with the keeper there. Maybe some obstruction. Either that or the ball went out of play on its delivery. It was restarted on the six yard box, so regardless, it's possession for the Greyhounds. They ultimately conceded it back. There's a free kick right outside the box and a wide position for Syracuse. Kalov with service. Glances off a few bodies and out to safety for Loyola. Loyola trying to clear it out as quickly as possible. Try and utilize a, a counterattack, but with Syracuse's strong strength in defense and wingbacks. It's hard to do that. To the far post, Holbrook passes it in front and it's potted home. Francesco Pagano make it six. Another great cross for, from Syracuse out on the wing into the box. Here's Kalov again, getting those balls on the wing and making it a perfect setup. And Pagano is there for that second touch right in front of the six yard box to get it in past the keeper. There was an, a good touch to get it into the middle, but then Pagano was there to really finish it off. Pagano with his second goal of the season, his first came against UConn earlier in the season, so an eight-game goalless drought snapped by the manliest native. His placement in the box was perfect there for anything that was, he was just ready for anything that was gonna dish out. Comfortable cushion for Syracuse. And a quick update on how they scored the rest of their goals. The fifth goal initially credited to Kyle of service given to Nathan Apoku. So Apoku with two goals in this contest, improving the talisman to seven on the year. Kirk Kalov though with two assists back to back. Cross rifled on, then blocked and shielded by Pagano. Good challenge. Loyola takes it the other way. There's a good clear from Loyola defense there. Getting in that slide tackle, making sure you, that it's all ball. Not giving up a foul. Kala breaks into the half space. Lofts it to Byros at the corner of the box. Then received down low, driven cross. Tough to get a foot on that one, but it was dangerous. And lots of plays this half coming from Kalov. He's really been all over the place in this second half with assists, with a goal in the first half. Just, he's everywhere. And Michael Gradis on the end line there on the left side, making his first appearance in his career for Syracuse, the Bel Air, Maryland native. Familiar company and Loyola making the trip to town. And for Greatest as a sophomore, chance to really prove yourself out on that left side flank. He's had some rambunctious energy early. The Syracuse movement is something to note in this half. Whether they're not restricting themselves to playing on the wing or playing in the middle, but they're really just focusing on making good runs. Come on, come on, come on. 
Clipped back by Medrano. Syracuse battling for it. On that far side end line. Reset, Roush presses though. And Loyola breaks free of it. Curtis Wagner into the game for Loyola. Locks in, 1v1 with, K with Christian Curdy. Great sliding challenge. San will still with it. Takes a deflection and Sheely collects. That was some really great defense from Curdy there, making sure he's staying with his mark, staying with his man, and blocking any shots that he might have. Pagano called offside. Another vertical play. Syracuse with so much success playing the long ball. That was the question of Hoku out of the game. Which players could prove themselves in playing that similar role when Ian McIntyre needs. And the Syracuse team play has been a result of that. And Pagano there just a little bit too eager with that offsides move. Loxanne's first touch too far away from him. Saldana skips past Byros and pushes it out wide. Quick play in front with Sweeney. Good combination play. Loxanne's pass just ahead of Saldana. Singleman waits for Pagano. He meets it. Time to make it a decision and Forced it ahead to Roush. It seemed like he had a bit more time on the ball there. Yeah, I think he forced it a little bit too much trying to get that play out wide. But Syracuse was a little too internally focused and too central there to get that wide ball. Defensive shape, a bit more compacted. Kurt Kalov flanking that back line. Syracuse's number seven. Tacking on two more assists to his tally, bringing it up to four on the year. Medrano, then Saldana. That one knuckles straight into Sheely. Could have been difficult. Sheely, not with a clean catch, but he still had it, had it under his body to save it. But a really great, powerful shot from Loyola there. Syracuse in control with the ball. Under five minutes to go. A bit more relaxed with the five goal cushion. Supplemented by a two goal day from Nathan Apoku, Levante Johnson tacking on. Kurt Kalov's service finding plenty of orange players. Six goals on the board for Syracuse. A fantastic showing for the Orange, which is their highest goals tally in regular season play. They did have an exhibition against Maris that was 6 nothing, but doesn't count to your stats. Syracuse just bolstering its status further with this performance. A much needed high scoring game for Syracuse to get that confidence it needs moving forward against a tough team like Louisville coming up soon. Louisville, the 11th ranked team in the country. I think to the history of that matchup when DeAndre Kerr scored two goals in a 5-4 double overtime loss last season. Has the makings of a lot of goals, but also gritty back and forth play. Syracuse currently ranked number seven in the country as well. And in those high scoring games, it really takes a toll on that keeper. So whether it was Syracuse last year with Lucas Donhauer and net against that five goal game for Louisville, or today with Loyola's keeper. Yeah, Don Howard getting a few appearances last year when Russell Sheely dealt with injury. And ultimately this year, players healthy, players in the rankings with team contributions. And for Syracuse, as the number seven team against number 11 Louisville, the rankings will come out tomorrow. For any adjustments that will be needed based on midweek play, Syracuse playing a lot of its matches midweek and the big question mark heading into this one that was answered is how would you respond after beating number four Wake Forest but underwhelming against other player, other teams? And they've definitely answered the bell tonight after dropping points in three matches, having two of those against out of conference opponents. One, 
Byros to the far post, over the head of Louis Bulger, and out of play. Syracuse just has so much space and time out on the wings. Loyola should really close that down a little bit more. You've noticed so many different corners and so many different crosses and scoring opportunities coming from the wide. So Loyola defense should close that down a little bit more. Two minutes to go, Loyola trying to experiment. That's left them vulnerable. Kalov, their space in front. Maybe it's greatest. Cover, 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 cover. Couldn't corral that ball in. The Maryland native could have been inside against a Loyola outfit that's already conceded six in his first appearance for the Orange. It was a good look and play in that long ball. I think if they played it a little bit more wide or a little bit more on his inside foot, it would have helped a little bit. Booted forward by Zingreb. Takes a hop and Holbrook shrugs it forward. Greatest out wide. Colin Byros 1v2. Out to the top of the box. Byros crafty on the ball. Pushes it out. It's in front for a bicycle kick. Flung over the bar from Roush. Roush in that situation trying to take a cross that's on his, while his back is faced to the goal and trying to make something happen with it. A good attempt for a bicycle kick if there was one. He already has two goals on the season coming off the bench as a substitute. Syracuse with a hefty margin and Roush trying anything. Ian McIntyre not as upset if that's a one goal game. Both teams tonight really utilizing those quick short passes off of a free kick to get the momentum going instead of slow it down. Shealy boots it forward. Syracuse with that quick passing, being able to control the tempo of this contest. Six to one over Loyola as the clock dwindles down. The throw in goes forward. Syracuse maybe with one last chance. He'll test it. It's out of play, and the final whistle sounds. Syracuse gets an emphatic 6-1 to one victory over Loyola. An important game for Syracuse's season, a high-scoring one that they're going to take this momentum and roll with it, moving into number 11 Louisville next.